Learning objectives include description of diseases, stages of diseases, and sources of infection. Diseases can be endemic, can be epidemic, or can be pandemic. These are the three terms that are used for uh, diseases with respect to the area. Now, endemic diseases are those that are consistently present but with low incidence. And they're confined to a small area, usually. Epidemic, on the other hand, is when the same disease that was at a low incidence, um, all of a sudden there is an increase in the cases in the same area where the disease was endemic or it spreads to little larger areas. That is called epidemic. Pandemic, when that disease spreads throughout the country or throughout the world, we call this as pandemic, like um, influenza. Every year in cold winter, we face this disease, influenza, which becomes pandemic. I mean, it runs throughout the country. Then the word incidence. It's the number of new cases in a given time period in a population. So, in, like in, in a month, like we say in August, a disease occurred in a population with this percentage. So, these many people got sick. That is called incidence because it is confined to a time point, a period. Then, there is another word, prevalence which also include old cases plus new ones. So in the same period, if we encounter like 15% cases of flu or any other disease, and throughout the year we know that they, or at the previous time point, there were already 20%, uh, we can then say that 15% is increased over, so 20 plus 15 would be the prevalence. few more terms uh, we need to know, like infection is basically the presence of uh, the disease, as we mentioned earlier. Uh, basically, when the organism colonize and grow in the body, it's called infection. Uh, these are basically progression of disease, how the disease occurs, or various stages of the disease. After infection, there is incubation period. Incubation period is the time when we don't see any disease or any symptom in the patient. Organism is multiplying, but the number of organism is not enough to cause any damage. This period is called incubation period, which varies from organism to organism depending upon the virulence uh, and the capability of the organism to replicate or multiply. And then once the disease starts showing up, it can show up as acute, uh, what we call acute period, where the disease shows up um, very heightened, in a heightened way, that the person gets really, really sick. And that's called acute period. After some time, the symptoms subside, and there is a decline in the symptoms. This is called a decline period. And then decline period is followed by convalescent period where the patient recovers from the disease. So basically, there are two outcomes. The other outcome, one is that the, the patient recovers from the disease, and the other outcome is that the person may die if the infection is overwhelming and not treated properly. Reservoir is basically the, the site where the organism is present and which basically is a source of infection for that disease. Those sources of infection, it, they could be inanimate objects like dead structures, not animals, not live things like humans, 
could be furniture, could be water, could be food. And those organisms that are saprophytic in nature, like Clostridium tetanae, because it lives in the soil, they're not really easy to eradicate. In animate is one source. Animate is another source. Animate are those living objects like humans, animals, birds, fish. And these organisms, they spread from person to person, individual to individual, animal to animal, either directly or indirectly. Then single host organisms, there are diseases that only happen in one individual or one species, not individual, one species. And if that's the case, it is easy for us to control them, to eradicate, even to eradicate them. Another term which you must know is zoonosis. Zoonosis primarily is an animal infection, but this disease can be transmitted to humans. But once it is transmitted to humans, then humans can transmit the disease from one person to another person. And zoonotic diseases are difficult to control. A carrier. What is a carrier? Carrier basically is a living a carrier. Uh, a living carrier is a pathogen infected individual who does not show any signs or symptoms of the disease. Organism is there in the body. It is replicating at a low rate, but not causing disease or any symptom in the person. So basically, wherever that person goes, he or she spreads that infection to other people who are susceptible. So a carrier is a dangerous thing. Um, if you want to read more, it's a very interesting story of a, a person called Mary. They named it Typhoid Mary. She was infected with uh, salmonella, but was a carrier. Uh, please read this story. It is given on the net. I mean, Google it and, and, and read that story. You would realize that what a carrier could, how much damage a carrier could do to the people. So in summary, we studied various definitions relating to the disease process. And also, we talked about some reservoirs like animate or inanimate objects and carriers. Thank you.